Hey, I'm Chris Zepp from Make Everything, and today we are picking up this 1,200 pound planer and moving it without a forklift. I'm gonna take you along for the ride and show you how we did it. Check it out. All right, so we are on our way to Jersey. Um, hopefully there's no traffic. We gotta drive through New York City. And the machine we're going to get is a little over a thousand pounds. Lewis, what do you think? Uh, I think we're going to get it in the truck nice and easy. Nice and easy. It's going to be great. It certainly looks heavy. Yeah, just try and pick it up. Pick it up. All right, get it? How are we looking? Oh, beautiful. Now we just gotta roll this monster down the ramp and go. All right. It's gonna be perfect. It's gonna be perfect. Man, that looks steep from here now. It does look a little steep, but it's all right. Uh, what do you think, rope? Two, two guys, yeah, two guys on the bottom. What rope and just drop it down slow? Well, I mean, I could put a, well, I could put a big load strap on it, have two guys on the top. I think that's probably the better move. Two guys on the top holding the load strap yeah. and then like, kind of pull it down. Support. Exactly, like basically lowering it down. All right, so the planer is loaded, and now he said we could have that pallet shelving, so now we have to figure out how to get that in the truck. You ready? We'll get it. Good show the Oh, with the cab. That's so cool. Was it functioning when you guys got in here? No, this thing's been out of commission for a long time. I bet you it would work. It was oiled. Wow. It's got like small train, train car wow. wheels. Around. That is something. Right, it splits there to break. Yep. This is one section goes. Yep. Up to the other wow, that's that's really cool. So this was a road, you said. This was a road. This was all yeah, a road. Yep. Ditch, ditches in the middle. Ah, uh, okay. And then eventually somebody said we need to keep this dry. I think it's probably the same time. They probably slung the roof over mm -hmm. when they put this in. Do you know what the original use of the building was when it was built? Just some sort of heavy industry? Yeah. Yeah, there's a train, uh, there's a set of tracks that cuts mm -hmm. across the room. Yeah. Underneath the deck over here. Oh yeah, and you guys you guys put the deck in or it was we here when you got here? Yeah. yeah, it was, so cool. uh, yeah, you're probably like a good foot off the ground right here. Yeah, it probably has a lot of variation yeah. in the height okay. as you go. Super cool, man. Yeah, we just do, we paint here. We yeah, here, yeah. And, yeah. and how many years you say you were in this shop? Just a couple yeah, of years? Like two and a half years. Two and a half years. Yeah, yeah. Next summer it'll be, you know, three. That's awesome, man. Massive. Really cool. Okay, so it's been about an hour of loading. The truck is brimming with stuff. Uh, we got the planer, the grinder, and he gave me a like a piece of pallet shelving with some shelves, some crossbars, and that stuff will be good for sort of storage in the shop. So now we have to drive back to the shop and stop at Home Depot to get a power cord to make sure that the machine works when we get back to the shop. So, you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. Okay, what's going on? Um, so it has no, it's three phase and it has no cord. What kind of cord okay. do I buy? I forgot. S J O O, S W O. Uh, it's five. It's five horsepower, three phase. So it's probably, it's the same size as the uh, as the saw stop. Phase three phase five horsepower. Yeah, three phase five horsepower. Well, Is I it? hope the thing works because I wasn't able to see it powered up. He didn't have a cord on it. Damn, that's a, that's a bold move. Yeah, that's right. Sight unseen, taking risks. He said it worked when they bought it. Okay, five horsepower, 208, yeah, 16.7 amps. Okay. So, 10.4SJOW. 10.4SJOW. Let me know if you have any other questions.
All right, so just so you understand how we're doing this, Lewis, release some uh, tension on that. So one click at a time, Lewis is releasing tension on that ratchet, uh, that come along. And I have this sideboard here so that this thing doesn't want to roll off. And what had just happened that we had to re-rig was we ran out of slack in our come along. So hopefully we have enough at this point to get all the way down to the bottom. And then if we don't, I think once it's low enough, I'll feel comfortable uh, pulling it by hand. Hold on, it looks like it wants to tip forward. So I'm gonna add some tension to this ratchet strap here on the top. That's keeping it, oh, see, look, the whole thing's like pulling apart because it's missing a bolt right here. So that's fun. All right, so hopefully we don't totally break this thing. Great. As you can see, there was no cord on it. So I have actually no idea if this thing works. Um, let's find out. Here we go. So I did that temporary wiring. Um, let's see how we do. We're plugged in, plugged in. I gotta make sure it's spinning in the right direction. Oh, we unplugged it. All right, now it's plugged in. <laughs> it's still, it's running backwards. Yeah, it's running backwards. All right, we gotta switch the phases again. Will she? So it has to spin towards you. The cutter has to be spinning towards you. Towards you. Towards you, yeah. Yeah, you. Yeah! figure out why the feed's not working. This has to be driven by this. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Okay, so I got this thing wired in. Um, it's kind of where it's gonna be at the end of this table. We have this 19 and a half inch wide beach slab that I cut, and part of the reason why I wanted a wider planer was to try and minimize the process of uh, flattening and planing the slabs that we do with the chainsaw mill. So we're gonna try it out and see what happens. So the idea is that you use this as a gauge to understand, I guess, how thick the material that you're starting with is. And then when I turn it on and I lower the table, I'll at least have an idea of where to start. And I'll get the table in place, then I'll set the dust collector up.
All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this type of video. Um, kind of something a little different than my normal build videos, but a lot of people on my Instagram ask to sort of see a little bit of the process of acquiring machinery and the different kind of people that I meet. So I want to incorporate that into my channel. So if it's something that you like, please leave me a comment down below. Let me know. And if it's not, let me know what you want to see more of. You know, I really enjoy making content for my channel and I want to do stuff that people want to watch. So this was a really fun day. We, you know, we really killed ourselves to move this thing. Me and Lewis, you know, we took some risks, but at the end of the day, we got it inside. I'm so, so happy with it. I can't wait to use it on more projects. Um, it works really well. And overall, the experience was, was great. It was exactly what you want when it comes to finding equipment, buying the equipment, you know, meeting people and seeing new shops and just, you know, connecting. And that's, that's part of the fun of, you know, finding the tools and using them is, is the process of getting them. So again, I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see behind the scenes stuff, when I go on little trips like this, follow my Instagram at make everything shop. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it, share it with friends if you want to show it around and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more stuff. Again, I'm Chris Zett for Make Everything. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next video.